in your, uh, I, I love saying packets, but it's not your packets in your email. Uh, we'll have a uh, proposed agenda for today's meeting. I hope you all had an opportunity to review it. If uh, there's no questions on it, do I have a motion to accept the, uh, the uh, proposed agenda? I do. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Also in your email, you would uh, you received your the uh, the minutes from our September uh, 21st commission meeting or Zoom call. Um, you look pretty right to me, but if there's uh, uh, and no questions or comments on it, do I have a motion to accept the uh, the September 21st um, uh, commission meeting minutes? I moved it. Second. I have a second. Yeah. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? All right, it's moved. Thanks. Well, good morning. Welcome to our October commission meeting. And contrary to popular belief, we are not in Williamstown yet. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully uh, we'll have a little dialogue and we'll see what uh, the uh, December meeting brings. Uh, there, there is an option. Uh, the option is the state office building, but we can talk about that a little later in the, uh, in the, uh, in the meeting. Uh, all in all, I think it's been a, a great summer. Uh, the weather just turned here. We're, we're into fall now, and uh, summer did bring dry weather. It's, but gardens did well, at least for me. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, uh, what the winter brings on Tug Hill. It's uh, if you're a soothsayer and you you look at uh, caterpillars like I do, it looks like it's going to be a mild winter. But uh, I'm, uh, the jury's going to still be out on that right now. So we'll see uh, see what the, what happens there. Dan, can I interrupt you? You know, I think it's extremely at this Sure. Because I, I, on my walks, I cannot believe the amount of caterpillars I see all over the road yeah. on this, on these side roads next to me. What, so that means we're going to have a mild winter? No, that's the color. They're, they're, I don't know. I think the, I don't know what the technical term is, but I used to call them woolly buggers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> woolly bears. I've heard that. <laughs> they're a black caterpillar. Probably uh, they they grow. The big ones will grow up to two inches long, and basically they're black in color. And the the old folklore was that if the the center color, which is uh, like a tan or an orange, oranges. Right. Uh, the the bigger the 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 color swipe in the middle me, means what winter's going to bring. So I mean, if it's uh, you know if it's long, then you know the color is kind of dragged out. Then they say it's going to be a, a severe winter. If you don't have much of a color and it's more black, then they say it's going to be a mild winter. I'm not correct there. That's correct, Ann. You're right on the money. Wow, I, I've just <laughs> never seen so many like I have this year. It's just mind-boggling to me. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you got to be lot. sure it's there's a lot. Got to be sure it's not the dead caterpillars because there's a lot of nests of those already. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Leo, That's right. Uh, Jan, just so the you other know, thing Leona. is, if uh, we, we go ahead, Leona's joined us. So hi, Leona. Hi, Leona. Oh, you're great. muted, Leona. Just so you know. If you touch your screen, you might get the microphone, so you can unmute yourself when you need to. On your lower left hand side is your microphone. I bet we're the only state. There we go. You're unmuted now. It's going to have something oh. in the minutes about caterpillars. <laughs> okay. I caught that. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to run, run to Adams this morning and I got back and my internet wasn't cooperating. So. Oh, oh. You were talking. Well, welcome, about Leona. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, well, we're talking about the winter, so or the potential winter here. So we'll see what happens. But we've had a bumper uh, apple crop here on Tug Hill this year. Yes. Yeah. The blackberries were heavy. Yeah. And, so. uh, very heavy. Yeah. The berries. We we spent a lot of weekends picking berries. So that's contrary to what the caterpillars uh, or caterpillars are saying. So we'll see what happens. I bet you we get some. Snow. With that, uh, I think it's an awful. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Good one, good one. You know, I think it's important also to note on this this call that uh, extremely important that uh, COVID-19 at this point is not really gonna go away anytime soon. 
So I think we need to uh, keep our, our, our vigilant in our personal lives and our work lives. Uh, we need to stay safe. You know, in my other life, I'm seeing a tremendous amount of uh, uptick in the amount of uh, positive cases, especially in the Midwest and the Great Plains. Uh, Wisconsin is going crazy right now. Uh, they're above, they're 10% above, well, their infection rate is above 10% right now. And as you all know, in certain areas, when hospitals become overwhelmed, that's when people die. We just don't want that to happen. So please, uh, you know, don't put your guards down. Uh, stay safe. Uh, you know, make sure you're social distancing, wear a mask. And I think it's very important that if you don't have to go out, don't go out. As a, uh, as a side note, um, being sequestered here in Montague, which is not a bad thing, okay, you know, so, <laughs> is uh, been running out of things to read in my library. So what's that? Especially during deer season. There you go. <laughs> so I think as a side note, it's uh, been running out of things to read in my uh, in in uh, my library. So I you know I decided here to break out uh, my uh, copy that I bought in 1994 of uh, cooperative rural planning, and this was our really the start of uh, of the cooperative planning board and the Tug Hill Commission. It was written by Elizabeth Redfield Marsh. It was it was actually published uh, by the Tug Hill Commission and. You know, when I first got involved with government uh, in, town, in the town of Montague in 1984, I got a, I, I think at that time, Ben Coe gave me a copy of this. And uh, at, when I read it in 84, it was published in 81. I, I really didn't know what they were trying to accomplish by this book. But to be honest with you, now that I am uh, uh, COVID sequestered, let's put it that way, I read it a couple more times. And to be honest with you, you know, this book does a great, great job talking about our core competencies. It talks about the, you know, rural planning. It talks about natural resource protection. It talks about community de uh, development, which is really our core competencies. That's what we've done well since 1972. So I think it's, it's really, uh, it's, a, it's a great read for those of you who still have it in your library. I pick up uh, something in it that I, every time I read it, reread it. And I, uh, I do recommend that uh, staff members, or, uh, commission members, anybody uh, read it again or read it. And if, uh, if somebody needs a copy, I'd be more than happy to mail it to you to, to read it. But it is a, it's, a, uh, it's a good book and I've got more appreciation of it uh, some 30 years later. So it's, uh, that's a great thing. What, what's the name of it, Jan? Uh, with that, uh, Cooperative Rural Planning. If you want a copy of it, I could send it to you. Well, I have a few one. in the office too. I bet you I've got one. Yep, yep. It's a quick read too. It's a nice book. So, uh, with that, at our at our September uh, meeting, September twenty first meeting, it was time again for uh, election of officers for twenty twenty one twenty twenty two, and we decided to appoint all Tom, Leona, and Jerry. Uh, to come up with a, uh, a slate of candidates as our nominating committee. And I guess at that point, at this point, we'd like to hear from them. Well, I haven't talked to Mike yet. I've, I've talked to Jan and Tom and um, I called Mike and didn't get an answer. And, and I haven't thought to call him back when I thought he'd be in. So can do we, it's in November, right? Election? Uh, no, we have uh, uh, election will be in, in December. In fact, oh, okay. Let me. Yeah. Uh, no, it's good. It's good. It's good to break out the bylaws every so often too. <laughs> you know? So I just want so everybody does know the commission members shall elect a chair, vice chair, and secretary. Term of office shall be at two years, with elections taking place before term expires. And general terms shall commence on January first, following the election, unless the election is to to fill a vacancy to complete a term, which shall take effect upon closing of the election. Nominations of one or more officers shall be opened and nominations placed on the floor at a duly uh, const a constituted uh, commission meeting, and that would be today. Nominations sh shall remain open until the next meeting when other nominations may be made, so we can continue to make nominations through the December meeting. 
All nominations must be seconded in order to be considered. The election of officers for any vacancy shall occur at the meeting, uh, the first meeting after the initial nominations were received. So we don't have a November meeting, so that would be December. Is that correct, Katie? That is correct. Thank you, Jan. So I should have called Mike several times. I didn't, in fact, I didn't call him. I emailed him and didn't get a response. So well, I'll- For some, uh, some reason I didn't get there, Leona, sorry. So are you willing to serve again as vice chairman? Sure. Okay. I mean, the so, pay is fine. The pay, I like the pay, extra pay, so. Yes, the pay is good. <laughs> So the slate of officers. Mike, that'll cover your that'll cover your internet access in Redfield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so our slate of officers um, is Jan Bogdanovich, Mike Yurden, and Tom Boxberger. A lot of changes there. Yeah. <laughs> They've all accepted to run again. Do we have a second? Second it. Okay. You don't have to vote on it. The way the, the nominations basically say that's all you need is a second to be considered. And again, please keep in mind that uh, is there any other nominations that uh, want to uh, uh, be uh, brought out today? And again, keep in mind that we, we can make nominations right through the December meeting. Okay. Good. Any other nominations? All right, for now, I guess silence means consent for now. So good. Um, with that, that's all I have. Katie, would you uh, you'd like to do your executive director report? Sure, thanks, Jen. Um, so, a quick overview of operations as we continue to work in the COVID-19 era here. Um, we continue to be at 50% capacity in the office. Our modified return to work plan has not been approved yet. Not disapproved either, just no, no word. Um, at, at the other part of that plan that I requested was uh, increasing the number of folks that can be in a car at the same time as long as they have masks on. Uh, so without that approved, it's, it's limited a little bit um, of some scheduled field trips that we had done. Um, it would be quite expensive to, to pay uh, a lot of people for personal mileage, especially since we're really trying to be uh, frugal with our non-personal expenses. So right now we're just doing meetings as needed, our training and, and municipal board meetings that we need to attend for, for business purposes. Uh, See. We continue to have to report weekly to the governor's office on our staff and say who is working remotely, who is both in the office and remote, and who is in the office full time. Um, that is something all the state agencies have to do. Uh, I will say the state office building seems to be a little bit, a little bit more uh, active these days. I did also get copied on a, an email that showed that weekly reporting across to several agencies, uh, which was kind of interesting. Uh, people are, it looks like really trying to shift their, their staff definitely into the uh, at least hybrid mode. Um, there weren't very many only working remotely anymore. Um, although our, our partners at DOS, uh, Karen Ketcher and Nancy Martell are still working uh, fully remotely through, I think the beginning of January. Any questions on operations? No. Uh, as far as the budget. Katie, oh. uh, Katie. Yep. Katie, uh, yeah, just a, a quick note. Thank you so much. I was, uh, I was welcomed. I, I spent that commission offices on the sixth floor a week ago Friday and that was saying I had my mask on, I had my hand cleaner. So I had that. <laughs> That went real well. Just a little surprised when I walked in uh, that uh, how few people are, were in the uh, in, in the in the building itself here. So that was, uh, um, and I should probably just make a note when I uh, went up to the guard uh, to uh, tell him that I was uh, had to go to the the sixth floor. <laughs> he uh, and 
I'm not going to paraphrase. He said, welcome to Andy's house. So I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Interesting. I think he looked lonely. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the cigars are awfully busy these days. Not a lot of people signing in, for sure. Well, I'm glad you were able to use the yeah, office yeah. for a little bit there, Jan. I'm sorry I missed you that day. Um, as far as the budget yeah, goes, okay. there have been no more budget bulletins. Uh, we are just kind of waiting for more guidance. So it's kind of uh, staying the course of, like I said, uh, being very frugal with our non-personal services expenses happy everyone's uh, getting a paycheck and we haven't had any additional cuts there. Uh, we are have been watching uh, for payroll bulletins. As you know, all the uh, performance advances, cost of living increases and longevity payments were delayed in April. We have seen some of our other state colleagues that are in unions, PEF and CSCA, get those performance advances and longevity payments paid out. However, MCs have not fallen suit. Uh, and that ha that's kind of got a history that happened many years ago during the last fiscal state fiscal crisis. So um, I expect at some point we will get caught up just like we were before, but in the, for now, um, unfortunately, the, those aren't coming through. Uh, I did send you all, um, a few attachments, I try not to send too many, but the, the one I just want to point out right now is uh, Division of Budget uh, has been asking us over the past several years to do some strategic planning and some reporting on our programs. And I, I sent you, um, a, it's a two page document, it's a chart that's kind of blue, it's entitled DOB Program Inventory. I just, I don't expect you to, to study this, but uh, you know, it, it's an interesting exercise for us to go through Again, as a state agency, we're very small, yet we're, we are doing the same metrics and same reporting as all the other really large state agencies. But it's a little different because we don't deliver any certain program. Um, we're not issuing driver's licenses. We're not um, responsible for economic development. We, we can guide our own program. So this, this document really um, describes a lot of what Jan said earlier, how our core competencies are the planning, natural resources, and community development, um, as well as our Council of Government program, uh, uh, which delivers all those programs and is our conduit in many ways to the local communities, as well as our emphasis on local government training and information services. So in this document, you'll see uh, all, these, all these metrics on the left-hand side are things that DOB um, prescribes and we have to come up with how we want to measure ourselves. We were required to have three measurements. And so we, we took our best shot at that. And uh, I, I'd be happy to answer any questions at any point. I'm gonna go over this with staff as well. Uh, Matt and Jean have helped me and Phil in the past with this, but um, I'm gonna share this more broadly, especially because it was expanded this year. There were quite a few columns to uh, to populate and not everything that we do is easily quantifiable, but they want numbers. And uh, so we, we did our best to do that. Again, much of what we do is based on our requests from our communities and our councils of government. So it's not things that we can force to make happen. There are things that we work cooperatively with people. So uh, that, that's a little bit of an interesting uh, situation to be in. Was there any questions on that? I'm sure you all studied it all weekend long. Yep. Yep. Um, hearing none. Uh, I, I was going to try to take an opportunity the next couple of months before the end of the year to try to uh, schedule individual one-on-ones with each of the commissioners just to have a chance to talk more informally about how things are going, ideas that you might have, anything you're hearing out on uh, the street regarding the commission. So uh, I, I don't want them to be uh, onerous. They want them to be fun. We can do them over Zoom or we can do them over the phone, um, but just kind of have a little bit of a debrief I, because I've, I've missed personal interaction <laughs> with, with most of you. So I'm kind of trying to look, look for that. So uh, I will be reaching out to schedule those in the next few weeks. And lastly, what else do I have here? Um, we had some fun uh, at the end of September. We switched from 
a purely online webinar driven delivery of training to uh, a couple of hybrid training events. We did one in Lowville with uh, our staff, Matt presented on Zoning Board of Appeal Basics uh, and Elena was with him. We had people in the room, plus we were uh, delivering it live via Zoom at the same time and interactive at both on both ends. We also did a second one in West Carthage with attorneys from Convoy and we were talking about, um, well, I just, just spaced it. What were we talking about that night? Or, or no, I'm sorry, they did the ZBA basics and Matt did uh, looking at your zoning law and evaluating it, whether it needs to be amended. I would say both of those went um, pretty well. We figured out the technology, uh, people both in the rooms and online seemed to enjoy it. We had questions, um, but we had a lot more people online than we had in the rooms. Uh, <laughs> which was interesting. And we had some feedback after the sessions that people hope that we continue to deliver the online with the in-person. In some people like being able to do it from their homes. Um, they like to try to set up in their communities like a joint meeting where all the planning board members are in the room watching it together so they can kind of generate some discussion amongst themselves while they're watching the training. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this all pans out uh, long term in terms of delivery of services and, and, and changing of that. Uh, so, so that went well. I don't know if um, anybody who was there, Jean was there at one of them, Elena was there. Did, did you have any other comments on the hybrid trainings? I'll just say that I think it went pretty seamless and we got pretty good um, participation in both. I guess I'd just like to add that um, I, was, I wasn't so surprised that um, the in-person numbers were down, um, but hopefully eventually they'll uh, want to come back to the in-person. I know that there are a lot, quite a few local officials out there that um, don't have the, the Zoom capability or have the, 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 the computer connection. So um, they are looking for the in-person. If we could do the, the Zoom and in-person going forward, I think that would be great. Yeah, and we, we tried that because we had done a, a little bit of a survey of our local planning and zoning board members to see what they wanted. And, and there are certainly, there's a subset of people that really do still want the in-person even now. Um, so we're trying to meet everybody's needs in a safe manner. Uh, and I've seen other organizations like Cornell Local Roads are starting to do things hybrid, in a hybrid format. So we're kind of, we're not an outlier. People are trying to get back to that a little bit. We have um, more of those hybrid uh, sessions coming up uh, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. Another thing that's interesting uh, there was a training with Department of State this last last week. Uh, Jean sat in on it, and during the course of that training, they mentioned Department of State mentioned that there are some talks at this point in Albany about looking to change open meetings law permanently that would allow this virtual virtual way of doing business. Um, I'm not sure how fast that will happen. Right now, we're just under all these continuing executive orders, but uh, again some long-term potential changes because of the, the shift we've seen during COVID. Uh, okay. Just one other thing, Katie, um, Chris Eastman at DOS mentioned that they really are trying to get that extension for more than just a month because that one month extension just is not working for everyone. They're hoping to at least get two or three month extension so that um, it, it's not such a, you know, scurry at the end. Um, yeah, people can plan. Yeah, yep. Uh, so moving to some regional projects, um, minimum maintenance roads. Oh, was someone making a comment? Oh, okay, sorry, I thought I heard something. Uh, minimum maintenance roads. So it doesn't look like there is gonna be another session uh, before the end of the year. Uh, we had heard some scuttlebutt about that during the summer, but that's kind of died down. 
But because of that, I, I, I did a little bit of a renewed effort um, for the, on the bill to see if we could get additional uh, interest in assembly sponsors in particular. Uh, we now have the entire Tug Hill delegation on the bill, um, assembly members Boonshan from Oneida County, as well as Assemblyman Smullen, uh, both were added um, more recently. So that's um, some good news. Uh, we also have been talking to the assembly side, the Rural Resources Commission members, because uh, this really is a rural New York issue and seeing if there is support there. Assemblyman Santa Barbara, who is the chairman of that committee has added himself to the bill and uh, still talking with some other offices and perhaps post-election we'll get some, some additional add-ons. Um, given that there's not gonna be a session likely this, the rest of this year, it, this will end up being renewed for next year. This is 2020 is the end of the legislative session. So that there'll be a whole new legislative session starting in 2021. So we'll have new bill numbers. Uh, all, all the uh, sponsors and co-sponsors will be carried over to the next legislative session. So that's kind of the goal right now. I do have a, um, a meeting uh, set up with Assembly Program and Council later this month to continue talking about uh, some input to the bill from their perspective. So uh, we could hopefully get it moved out of committee. Um, additionally, uh, I've heard that the Tug Hill delegation may do a sign-on letter come the first of the year. Uh, so it would come from all of our senators and, and assembly people on Tug Hill uh, to others in the state legislature to try to gain some traction. In terms of West Turin and the current uh, situation that they're in, uh, you'll, you'll remember the Weichel West Turin case has been floating around for a while. Uh, at last time it went to the appellate court, it got thrown back on basically a technicality. The landowner, Mr. Weichel, did refile. Uh, Judge McCluskey ruled in his favor. The town of West Turin appealed again, and it was fully submitted in July to the appellate court by. Uh, Actually, Mark is Mark Jibo is still still a, a serving as the town's attorney in this case, uh, despite his retirement. And so now we're waiting for an opinion. The, uh, everything's delayed due to COVID, but I looked on their website last week. It does seem like they're starting to really um, listen listen to cases again. So we'll see what comes out of that. That could be uh, really important either way it goes. Another piece of legislation, the Lorraine Worth Court consolidation legislation uh, still has not been delivered to the governor. The towns of Lorraine and Worth and Cooperative Tug Hill Council sent letters to the governor's office uh, expressing their support of the bill and encouraging him to sign it uh, if, if when it's delivered to him. Uh, this is something we're really tracking carefully because it needs to happen by the end of the calendar year or that would have to start from scratch would really, which would really cause some problems for the town of Worth. Uh, so Angie, especially, has been really on top of that one. As I mentioned, um, upcoming training and webinars being hosted by us. The second part of the Constable Chronicles is later this month. The first one was very well received. Hopefully, uh, I know some of you were able to watch it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I think the second one's going to be uh, just as engaging and entertaining. We also have three more sessions of the virtual Black River Watershed Conference. Uh, two more of those uh, hybrid sessions. Uh, Let me just, I got a quick question, Katie. Yeah. Okay, just a quick question. Is there any issue from uh, from a technology standpoint with this, uh, the uh, Constable Chron uh, Chronicles if we send uh, the link to uh, people <laughs> around the country uh, and as, far, as long as they register, there's no problem with the, 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 the number of people that are gonna join this? We might have a 500 limit. I can't imagine we'd hit, hit okay. 500. I see Jen's nodding, no. we do have 500, but if we did, that would be a great problem to have. And we are recording those and putting them on our <laughs> yeah. YouTube our YouTube channel. I mean, we've got quite a number of videos on that YouTube channel now, so they would be able to see it after the fact too. There was a little blurry okay. Harold about it. Too. So it's okay for, to, to forward that, that link to anybody, and as long as they, they, they register, we're fine. Yes. Okay. Jerry, were you saying something? Uh, I, there was a little blurb in the Boonville Herald about it. Too. Yeah, we put a press release about it. Yep. Okay. 
Um, so two more planning and zoning board sessions at the end of this month, Matt and Elena um, doing one on planning board basics in Florence, because Florence now has really good internet. And uh, that's one of the prerequisites for locations that they've got to have uh, really solid Wi-Fi so we can do all the, the transmittal of data that we need to do. Um, and then the second one is renewable energy and land use being done by Dave Gerson and Jim Burroughs from Convoy and the town of Watertown at the end of the month. Um, again, hybrid. So look for those. There's been information in the uh, Tokyo Times on those. Uh, assessors training, we had sent out, um, we had gotten a question, I can't remember exactly how it came about, from an assessor asking if we were going to offer any assessors training, since again, we did not have the LGC and we always have a, an assessors track there. And so we took that and um, did a little surveying of assessors. It seemed like there was some demand out there. So we have scheduled an assessors training for November 18th at the Tailwater. It would be in person only. That doesn't really lend itself to a webinar format. We've got, I think, half the barn. So we have plenty of space to um, space people well more than six feet uh, and will require masks when not seated, all that kind of thing. So the information on that went out on Friday and we need responses by November 11th. So that's another training we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think I sent out a, a, a training events. Uh, we keep track of these. This is something easy to track, uh, showing what we've done so far. And even despite the uh, LGC, we're looking really good. Right now, we've had a little over 1,300 people attend our trainings. And that's uh, with seven or so still pending. So our numbers are, are not going to look bad. Uh, luckily, this webinar thing has really kind of started to get some traction and we're seeing a lot of participation. And then the last, uh, last thing I, was gonna, I wanted to discuss was the 480A issue paper. Uh, sent that out to you all on Friday. Uh, 480A, as many of you have heard over the years, is just, it's, it's got some issues for, for places like Tug Hill and, and towns that have a lot of uh, 480A properties. Over the last couple of months, uh, Osceola has really uh, shown some serious issues with Corrigan Mulpus uh, applying for 480A on their East Branch of Fish Creek properties and getting that approved. So come the first of the year, uh, things in Osceola with their budget aren't looking so good. Uh, so we have put this paper together. Uh, it, 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 it's a policy, it's really a policy recommendation that this, some, this conversation about 480A reforms need to continue. We point out several um, suggestions and we are also sharing this with partners to get their feedback before we would put this out as a final. But um, I don't know, Jen and Angie have been working on this in the weeds. Did either one of you want to make any comments about it? I would just say, like Katie said, we sent that out to um, four, four people on Friday, late Friday, and heard immediately back from Fran Yarden, who was pretty happy that we had kind of put it all out there. But I think it's important for the, because we've quoted some people, so that it went to them first. We want to make sure their quotes are correct. So um, and we also sent it to Candy Aiken. I just want to say that Lewis County Real Property has been amazing to work with. They've all been pretty cool to work with, but um, since most of the impacts in Lewis County, um, I think they would really welcome a chance for this paper to get some traction because they're seeing they're seeing the brunt of the impact. So, you know, Katie, if if you can look at this, I, I, I did some math on this, and let's you you mentioned Osceola, which there right currently there's uh, 51 parcels that are part of the exemption here. So just in real terms, if you look at it, this legislation has basically given landowners a $2.2 million in re a reduction in equalized value on those 51 parcels, which equates to by their, you know, if you look at their tax rate, about a $35,000 annual missed town tax payment. 
And in turn, what they're getting is, if I look at this right, 1300 bucks annually from stumpage fees. And this is a problem. This is a major problem. 1300 in a good year. <laughs> yeah, and the bad news is, is that's just going to get worse because that does not reflect the, the, what, the three or four additional Mulpus properties yeah. that get put in. That's, right. I'm sorry to say that's just going to get a lot worse, which is why it's sort of, it's out there in draft form, but if we publish it after the 21, 2021 numbers come out, it's going to be a lot worse. worse. A lot worse. And interestingly, the Corrigan Mopus property is east. So there's a DEC held conservation easement on that property that pays 35 or so percent of the taxes off the top. So yeah. the 480 exemption is only on the remaining value to, for, to, um, to Mopus. Uh, wow. And 480A in, includes school taxes as well, correct? Right. So yes. we basically focused just on the town, like the you know county, town, and schools are all affected by that exemption. Towns feel it the most because they have fewer people to spread the the pain across. Right. Uh, school districts and counties not not to so, as much of an amount, but certainly they have an impact as well. Yeah, this is a perfect storm. And, and I'll tell you what, Osceola is leading the pack right now. This is a bad, bad trend. I mean, if you look down through a lot of the, uh, the, the towns, they're, they're actually dropping the number of, uh, uh, you know, of uh, exemptions uh, per parcel. But Osceola just to, continues to grow, and this is not a good trend. It'll, it'll give you a little bit of an idea of why the town of Redfield would rather have land go to the state than... <laughs> then have it on the open market because at least you know you're getting some taxes out of that's it. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, has anybody looked at what the, I mean, you know, from a stumpage fee here, I mean, that just, uh, you know, possibly making it more equitable. I look at this program as kind of like a 401k. It's deferred payments. But, uh, you know, clearly it's not that, it's not that at all. It's basically the, the town's taking it. <laughs> You know, pretty hard in a situation like this. Well, Dan, as we know, that MOPE is clear cut the whole property. I mean, there's nothing standing there. So there's, there's not many That's right. I mean, they, they cut yeah. everything and and they did it intentionally. And the thing that is, uh, the state approved the forest plan, a 50 year plan. Uh, so they approved that whole deal. I mean, uh, I mean, it's it just, uh, you know, MOPE is ready to sell it, but who's going to buy that much land that is? No trees on it. You know what I'm saying? It's terrible. So we're in a tough, a tough situation here, really. Yeah. Well, I, oh, Jan popped off, but he's back. Um, so I, I appreciate, Jan, that you, you read that through. I, I'm assuming then nobody has any serious concerns about anything we're saying in that. And, no. you know, we're, we're trying to be informative and, and, for the state level policy discussion on this issue. It has implications for our local municipalities budgets. It has implications for forest. You know, the forest cover of Tug Hill is, is really very relevant to us. I gotta get those squirrels to keep running, hold on. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Now everyone can see why we need improved uh, <laughs> internet access and video. Okay. <laughs> about, about the schools, I know this was like maybe 20 years ago, there was a large parcel uh, between Boonville and Forsport uh, that changed hands that had a lot, that had a 480A on it. Uh, well, the new owner went in and did extensive cutting in violation and then they had to pay back money. And the town got some, the county got some, but the school got, district got something like between 55 and $60,000, well, which was, you know, unforeseen blessing, but, uh, and it's that same area now where the new solar farm is going to go. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Katie was a, co a copy of this to, uh, let's see, Osceola, is that Blankenbush? 
Uh, yeah, I think that is blank. I think that is blank and bush. Yes, it is. And it would. What's that? Griffo? I have not sent one yet. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Grifo. Griffo. Well, yeah, Griffo on the Senate side, blank and bush on the assembly side. No, I, I, that's a good idea. I think I should we should send copies to them. To them. Even in draft form, so they understand Good. what we're talking about. Yep. That's right. Yep. Any other thoughts or comments? <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> when we talked to Fran Yurden at the last CTA. So what you're saying, <laughs> what you're saying, Mike, is that we'll not we'll not see another stumpage payment from from uh, Mulpus or from the the parcels and uh, that 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 are. Are owned by Mopus for probably know. 30 years. <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, I mean, how a lot of it was clear cut. The clear cut, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, we didn't mention, but, uh, we also we also plan to uh, share this with our uh, colleagues at DEC uh, in, in the forestry office, Rob Davies and and company. Uh, I also was on the. For, for them to comment, I, I, I know they really were in favor of a lot of the reforms that were being talked about to 480A a few years ago and were frustrated when those didn't get enacted. Uh, I did talk to John Bartow last week and this came up and he, he had some interesting insights. He thought perhaps um, there would be an appetite to look at this at reform again, especially if it was couched in terms of the climate, all the climate efforts that are happening right now. and. It could, you know, if you could talk about it in terms of carbon storage and sequestration, um, part of the problem is going to be, especially on the reimbursement portion to communities, where's that money going to come from? If we're talking about keeping everybody to a no more than 1% uh, impact to their, their municipal budgets, where, where's the money come from? But all, all good thoughts so we can blend this into the current conversation. I wish there was really good work on to lean on DEC for permitting such such slaughter of the forest. It's terrible. It's it's awful. Uh, Jan, if you remember right, uh, up in Constableville uh, a couple of years ago, when we had Mopus here at our uh, spring of fall dinner, this issue was talked about then. And uh, at that time, they hadn't cut all the trees. But since then, they've cut the rest of them. So, you know. But we've talked about this before, and uh, and I think I think we talked that night to the DEC people, and you know, they you know, who knows why they permitted that? They wouldn't do it on their own property. Yeah. Well, very good. Thank you. Good work on the good work, Katie. Stay, you know, bring this out. This is really good work. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thanks, and thanks to Jen and Angie, and uh, love that work. Uh, then the last thing I will oh, say you. is I, I got a last minute um, it's a, a last minute call last week from Bill Farber. He is the chairman of the Hamilton County Board of Supervisors and a, a, a big uh, actor in Adirondack type issues. And there's this organization called Adirondack Inner County, which I have never heard of before. It's kind of a loose organization. Basically, all the counties that are within the Adirondack Park meet on a monthly basis, like their county leadership, and they, they move this meeting around the, the counties and they, they usually go actually to physically to the county and, and talk and have lunch and get some presentations. And of course, COVID has changed some stuff up. In October, they're in Lewis County and uh, there were no presentations right off the bat that were um, identified, I guess. So Bill thought of us and asked if I would like to do a presentation about the commission and the work we do and, um, and how some of the, what we do relates to the Adirondacks. So I'll be doing that on Thursday, um, which is a really good place for us to be. Um, you know, I think, I think we have a lot in common with the Adirondacks. We're always kind of running into each other. And so more give and take uh, the better. And so just let you know that there, our, our name continues to be out there and people, 
people are looking for us to, to bring a voice to the conversation. Um, I will say the Climate Action Councils and the advisory panels, um, I've been on a couple of meetings so far. I'm not sure exactly how that's um, all gonna play out. Uh, it's interesting. It could probably take 100% of my time if I had the ability to, to devote that much of it to it, but obviously that's not gonna happen, but it is gonna be a little bit of a time, a time suck for a few, several months. And with that, I'm done. Well, let's roll right into the uh, Council of Government report. Um, it's uh, your choice, Katie, how to do this. Sure, um, let's see, I think I had an order. I switch. I try to switch them around. So Salmon Rivers and North Shore, Paul, do you wanna go first? Sure, uh, probably the uh, big thing going on right now is you would expect is uh, towns working on budgets. They're in the, uh, the thick of their budget season. Everybody's working hard on those and uh, I'd have to say, I see them spending more time uh, on the budgets this year than I can remember in recent years, just because of the complexity and uncertainty having to do with, uh, with revenues and budget situation and what we can expect uh, next year. One new twist in the whole uh, budget uh, saga is that uh, several of my municipalities have headed uh, budget lines related to uh, the coronavirus and expenses they've had with uh, doing monitoring of people coming into meetings and additional uh, cleaning and sanitation uh, needs uh, following up with those meetings. So that's been a, a new and additional expense. The, uh, the good news to the extent that you can say anything related to coronavirus is uh, good news is that uh, so far uh, sales tax revenues do not seem to have been uh, significantly impacted by the coronavirus. The numbers have been coming in pretty close to around to what they have been in the past. As I'm sure you've heard, uh, payments from the state in some cases have been reduced by a certain percentage. And uh, municipalities are not sure what they want to do about budgeting in those categories next year since the announced intention is to restore those funding amounts back to uh, normal levels next year. But of course, with what's going on and the continued uncertainty, there's no certainly no guarantee of that. So communities are, are on they're, they're They're wary about how much they want to uh, to budget. And considering that even if they do budget the entire amount, they're aware that they may have to reduce spending in the new year if the revenues don't come in at the levels that they are currently budgeting for. So that's probably the big thing going on in North Shore and Salmon Rivers. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Angie, Cooperative Tuckhead Council. Well, I'm going to try and strain my internet and uh, <laughs> see if I can keep myself and Uncle Mike's computer on here. Um, as Paul mentioned, it's budget season, so most of the towns are working on budgeting. With, it's been interesting for all of them, as Paul mentioned. Um, and Katie talked about a couple of my big regional projects, so I won't go over those. Um, specifically, we've got some, uh, some people resigning or retiring in some of my towns here in the off election year. Um, the town of Adams Highway Superintendent Terry Babcock, who's been there for 30 some years, is retiring uh, at the end of this month, I believe. So they'll be looking to a point to fill that till next year. The town of Harrisburg's town clerk is also, he's resigning um, midstream because he's moving out of town. So they'll have a vacancy to fill. And the town of Worth's highway superintendent who resigned um, right near the beginning of the year, that is vacant. I don't believe anybody is on the ballot um, because petitions had to be in so early. Um, but I think they have some people that are gonna run by write-in or whatever. Uh, so I will have some changes uh, midstream here. Um, what else is going on? I've got a few towns working on water and sewer type stuff. Uh, they've got open projects going on and uh, some that are waiting for funding to be available again. Casperville's uh, working with an engineer. They need to raise their sewer pump uh, plant because it floods every time the water gets high. Um, so they're waiting for funding to open again. And uh, Port Leiden's sewer project has run a little farther in than they thought it was going to. So I think they're waiting for funding again from the state to be able to apply. Um, I have 
couple of towns that are just finishing up salt shed uh, grant projects that are working through the reimbursement um, program now, Williamstown and Florence, and the town of Lewis, who was funded a year before them. Um, they had to get an extension that just recently got approved. Um, they're looking at a stick built building instead of one of the ones with the, the uh, tarp on top. So it's taken them a little longer to get through the process because the funding is a, is a little more funds for the project, but they're still plugging away in any case. Uh, the other big news from Lewis is they held their public, public hearing in September and did approve the minimum maintenance, the second half of the minimum maintenance road law. Um, they've been stalled midway through the process for several years now but they finally got that done. And uh, big news from Pinckney, my last of my original 16 towns that hadn't approved an updated special areas map. Uh, Elena and I were there in October, uh, what month is this? October last week, and they did approve their uh, updated special areas map finally, and also approved um, their official highway map with a uh, look at the, uh, the changes the DOT might've made. Um, so we'll work in them through the process to file the abandonment certificate and get the map filed appropriately um, with the county or the certificate of the map filed appropriately with the county. Uh, we also went to West Turin last week, Elena and I, and talked to them about uh, redoing their official road map. And uh, we're working with both Pinckney and West Turin right at this point to adopt the mini plans that one of our interns worked on that pulled the the cooperative planning work out of our, that the towns have worked on for so many years into a, a individual mini comp plan for them. Um, so th those are the first two we're working with. But So Elena spent most of last week in CTHC traveling with me. So thank you, uh -huh. Elena. Um, I think that's about all that's going on in my towns that was anything unusual. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Angie. Uh, no cog, Jean, if you're able to join us. I know you took a phone call. Oh, she might still be on the call. So let's, oh, okay. there she is. Okay. <clears throat> Katie, oh, this yeah. is Gary. I could <clears throat> add a little bit about our sales tax problem in Oneida County. Sure. The county executive was on uh, TV last week, said it's down 25 to 30%, $4 million short. Uh, additional problem, um, what was called, or is called a Nexus Center in Utica, a multi- uh, venue complex being built next to the Utica Memorial Auditorium was halted in the spring. The company that was doing the work has filed suit uh, against the county and the uh, Utica Auditorium for non-payment of work. And they have not been able to pay them because they do not have the funds. So that was going to be an additional draw into the area. There was gonna be a casino there uh, restaurants, etc. So that has all stopped. Uh, they don't know what they're going to do at this point, but uh, Pesene said that they are $4 million short. So all the municipalities are going to be getting less money than what they budgeted for. Uh, and, you know, have been asked to make further cuts. So. Mm. Mm. Not good news. No. And also additionally. Uh, Jerry, real quick, Jerry, is the, is the hosp regional hospital still going through in downtown? Yeah. It seems like it's going through not as quickly, but it, you know, when you go by there, uh, there's work going on. There's a lot of construction through that area of the city because they're also working on the road. So it's like every time when you go in that downtown area, you really yeah. don't know where you're going to end up. So for the most part, I've been kind of avoiding it uh to go way back to the training are they are they taking is a city taking property or city take, taking property by eminent domain i believe that they started doing that uh earlier in the summer but i haven't heard much about it lately um but you know okay. there's a lot of buildings that have gone down there was only a few that were unwilling to to sell but you know there's been a lot of buildings down it looks so different through there. You, and then with all the road changes, it's like, it's hard to drive through because you're gawking and trying to drive and you're always in the wrong lane. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just to flip back a minute to the training schedule, uh, Oneida County kind of foresaw that there was gonna be problems with budgeting. 
uh, the local government education committee with a lot of help from Carla have set up a training tomorrow night, uh, how to budget during this tough time for counties and towns. Uh, Laird Petrie is going to be doing it. Uh, we had quite a few people uh, sign up. It's going to be offered via Zoom, but uh, you know that's it's really keying into the problems that you know, like villages or budgets are so small, and even a lot of the towns have depended on the large amount of money they get every year from Oneida County, who shares the sales tax. So uh, that training hopefully will be well attended. Thank you. For Reminding me of that one. Jean, did you want to talk about NOCA? Yep. Um, October was the first month that we had Lisa Bellinger on as an associate contractor. Um, so between Lisa, John, and Harlan, they covered all 17 uh, NOCA communities. Um, Lisa got back to me with a couple questions. Um, I think she'll. I, I think she'll do a good job for us. It's, uh, and for no cod. Um, she signed a three year or three month contract and hopefully we'll sign a, a one year contract uh, as of the first of the year. Um, the, um, we sent out, I sent out the, um, the annual no cod business um, uh, a meeting uh, information to all 17 communities at the end of um, September and ask them to complete a survey uh, at, by October 15th. Um, by last Thursday, I only had four responses. So I emailed everyone individually on Friday asking them to, um, to, to complete the survey. And today I just saw we have 10. So at least now we have a, a, a majority, <laughs> a majority. Um, I'm looking at those surveys as a vote from each of the communities. So at least we have a majority of everyone voting on, on the business, which included approving uh, the minutes from last, um, last um, meeting, um, approving the budget, and um, approving changes to the bylaws, and one last thing. Oh, um, voting on the the um, uh, the NOCOG um, executive committee members officers. Um, we have NOCOG has has offered the um, uh, an associate contract to Joe Rollins, who is the supervisor for Stuben come the first of the year when uh, Harlan is due to retire. That will um, keep us at three associate contracts to cover all of the 17 NOCA communities. Um, and then staff in Watertown can cover uh, meetings as needed, but hopefully the three, uh, Lisa, John, Gilt, and um, Joe Rollins will be able to cover all the all the meetings, but since Joe is also on the NOCOG executive committee board, um, he's going he will need to step down. Um, we will have a NOCOG executive committee meeting in December to discuss this. Um, but in in the meantime, I I um, I have reached out to Ed Davis to see if he would be interested in being on the executive committee since he was one of the um, ones that threw his name in the, in the ring for associate contractor. And we, uh, we, didn't, we didn't offer it to him. So I asked Ed if he'd be interested in being on the executive committee. And he said, yes, he would absolutely want to be on the ex executive committee. It, and I made his day. <laughs> He's always, um, Ed is planning board chair in the town of Lee. He is, um, he loves the commission and he loves NOCOG. And I think he'll be a good board member for, for NOCOG. So um, 
I think that's all, I think that's all I have. Can you think of any anything else, Katie? No, other than um, Joe is also going to. I, I hope I don't know if this is news yet, but he will also be stepping down as supervisor for the town of Japan. It's something he's been thinking about for some time. Um, so they're going to have a vacancy that they'll have to appoint and then do an election for. And I think, well, Joe became supervisor because, well, the two previous ones died in office. So there was kind of a big void there. And Joe's got a lot of energy, did a good job, but I think he always saw it as temporary. <laughs> and it's been temporary, I think, for three years now. Yeah. Yep. And I so, think he, he'll, he'll do a good job in this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we continue to keep all the balls in the air and no yeah. cut. Good job, Jean. Thank you. Um, and Raycog, maybe. Yep, uh, I guess the biggest thing's probably been the LED lighting project. Uh, I know September was a real busy month with individual meetings for every municipality. There were 16 participants in the shared service project for the LED lighting. Um, of those 16 so far, a ton of lime dropped out like right after we submitted for the grant because they had, I think, other things going on they want to focus on and Champion did opt out of the program. Currently, uh, West Carthage, Wilna, Copenhagen, Deferia, Lions Falls and Krogan have all opted into the program. And then I'm expecting, uh, got pretty strong feelings from these communities from talking to them that Village of Lalo, Carthage and Tom Martinsburg will be uh, proven to move forward. And then that will leave us with uh, Casterland, the town of Village of Adams, Sackets Harbor and Denmark as far as the communities that I'm just not sure uh, town of Denmark actually is going to need to piggyback either with Copenhagen or Casterland, so they only have a few lights, so I expect they're going to go with Copenhagen to do that right now. Um, part of that project we did find out is that Jefferson County was doing their shared service plan, and they are going to approve to add the LED lighting as part of their shared service plan, which um, according to Scott Burrow, mayor for Village of West Carthage, he said that that will mean that uh, the communities in Jefferson County will get a rebate after the first of the year based upon a percentage of their savings. So they're going to actually get a little more money back out of this project from that. Uh, in the process, I talked with Katie, and so Katie reached out to Ryan Pache from Lewis County, and they weren't really doing anything with a shared service plan, but they did ask us if we could help assist them and doing a plan for these communities in Lewis County related to LED lighting. So I think we're gonna look into that and uh, uh, try to do that so they can also get that same type of rebate. Uh, also railroad bed between uh, Carthage and Laval. Uh, Ron Trottier, the developer there, he has now purchased the building, the depot in Carthage. Uh, he purchased the railroad buildings in Laval he has, I think, a long-term lease on the railroad bed uh, between uh, Carthage and Lowell and also out to uh, Krogan. Um, he's looking at doing like a little scenic railroad type thing from Lowell to Krogan and looking to do pedal cars between uh, Lowell and Carthage with Casterland being the midpoint, the turnaround point or ending term terminating point. So um, I know he did move a locomotive there's a locomotive sitting over by Laval Farmers Co-op now that he moved up from Pennsylvania and there was an article done on it probably about a month or so ago um, in the newspaper related to that. So there's potentially some activity that's gonna be taking place there. Oh, he also did buy the Memories Restaurant also and he wants to add docks in there so people can boat up there and have dinner and that type of thing. So, so there's at least some stuff maybe happening there. Uh, also been working on the Laval, Town and Village of Laval are doing a joint comp plan and Elena and Matt have been meeting with them and working with them right now on that. Uh, Zoom meetings, uh, Raycog has been fairly busy with that. We had 12 in April for Raycog and that kind of went down a little bit into July and then after July it started going back up. So like in September we had eight uh, Zoom meetings that we did. Some of the communities are actually doing remote meetings plus doing in-person meetings and almost every one of these communities, whenever I set up the Zoom meeting or one of us sets up a Zoom meeting, uh, 
you know, all the communities ever say is very positive. They appreciate it. They couldn't have done it without the commission. They appreciate the commission paying for the service and providing that as a free service to them. Um, and with that, actually the North uh, Country Clerk Association, uh, one of my clerks there reached out to whether we would do a Zoom meeting for them. And we did that and Felicia actually covered that one and ran that meeting. Um, so that was a nice thing that they, they appreciated. And then uh, pretty much Gene, Carla, Matt, and Elena have all kind of been kicking in and helping out with my, with my meetings at RAYCOG because of, um, uh, because of the in-person and remote option for a lot of the communities. I can't kind of do both things at the same time. So they've been actually helping out a lot with that and helping with a lot of those meetings. And then I'll just say that we have a board meeting this Wednesday at 6 p.m. That's going to be at West Carthage, and we're going to do the social distancing and and hold it there in their community room, which is pretty good inside the room. And then I'll only just kind of confirm what Paul had said. Sales tax, the ferret sales tax is actually up this year at this point in time than last year. So uh, they reported that at their meeting. So with that, that's all I got, unless you have any questions. Thank you. No questions? Yeah. Oh, maybe a financial report. Yep. So you should have all had that on your email. Uh, we haven't had very much expenses except for salary. We're right at 50% with our salary expenses. Uh, our non-salary, we've only expended 14% to date. Uh, again, we're under directives from the budget to stay very conservative. Uh, really, uh, the only thing we've went over a little bit is internet agency services and was an unexpected uh, payment there and a little bit on software maintenance and support. Uh, Felicia's on. If you have any questions for either of us, we'd be happy to, to try to answer those, but it's pretty, uh, pretty basic. Any questions? Nope. <clears throat> yeah, just, go ahead. No. You know, sometimes I say that I have some real superficial deep thoughts at times. But I'm just <laughs> curious, um, what have we decided? What what have we decide, decided on uh, on our December meeting? Is that uh, we're going to continue with Zoom, or is this something we want to talk about? Possibly trying to. Maybe get, you know, is it the third floor has a huge room at the state office building? I'm just up for anything. I'm just curious what your thoughts are. I may find out something different um, this week, but I don't expect so. So I'm going to be Zooming as my only choice for a while. Okay. All right. This. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm concerned, so I just want to make sure that we can, can accommodate every, uh, you know, everybody. Uh, the Zoom is fine, but I'm just, uh, I'm just curious if that's something we might want to try to do. We can do a combination of both or, and meet. It's it's entirely up uh, to to the, the numbers. That's how I look at it. I, I think it would be nice to do a combination, maybe. Uh, I, you know, unless things get worse uh, between now and then. Uh, I think there are more cases in Oneida County than either uh, Jefferson, Lewis, or Oswego counties, but most of our cases are in the lower part of the county in the Utica Rome area. Uh, also, I'd just like to mention if Harlan's retiring at the end of the year, even though NOCOG and Tug Hill are separate, he's been involved for 25 years. And um, yep. You know, I'd like to do something to show some appreciation. So, you know, this this is a, a it, we, it would be a a, a public meeting and opens uh, open door meeting. So I'm just curious if the state office building would number one allow us to do that. Number two, uh, there's a very big conference room that we've used in other years. Right. Is it on the third floor? Eleventh floor. Just 11th curious floor. if we, you know. Wait, what is that? It's the eleventh floor, but yeah, there is a very large. There's a couple oh, of very is it? large okay. floors. It, yes. yep. Yeah, we've met up there several times. Just curious, this is something we, we might be at least plan for. We've got sixty days. It might be something we can plan for. It'd be nice to get together. I really enjoyed myself at the uh, at the retreat in Boonville, 
but you know, maybe we can do a combination of Zoom. A lot of things change in 60 days, so it would be tentative. Yep. But uh, if, if everybody's okay with it, let, let's explore the options. Of, if, if I, certainly, good. I, I certainly be in favor of that, Dan. I think it's nice to get together. We haven't seen each other often all summer long, so no, it'd be nice to get together. And, and with that, Jerry, we could probably, you know, have just a luncheon for of our own at that time, you know. Okay. Let me um, talk to the state office building and see how, how they would feel about it. We could also brainstorm if there's another location closer to Harlan, if, if it's about Harlan, um, you know, another big room that we could use might be easier for him to get there. So let's, yeah, right. let's talk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, very good. And you know, it's always nice to visit uh, Andy's house. Grape and Greg and Camden's got a huge. I had to throw. I I had to throw that in. Okay. Things <laughs> recently, right? <laughs> At the Grape and Greg, I don't know if everybody saw that, but uh, off duty as Swigo County Sheriff's gun went off while he was eating there and accidentally hit a couple of people. He has <laughs> lost his position. No, <laughs> no. I, we did see that. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, one was a child and a woman. <laughs> Yeah, unloaded sitting there eating. Oh my god! Oh yeah. <laughs> no. uh, well, since that's happened, the chances of that happening again are very, very low. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the odds in our odds in our favor there. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem with the grip and grog is yeah. they do not have Wi-Fi. Oh. So it would not be able. It, it wouldn't be. Um, no, they don't. No. I thought they were offering a hotspot to kids out in the parking lot. I'm sure there. I'm. Mm, I, don't I think know. I saw. I read something about that recently. We. I get. I've got Jeff on my phone. I could text him and ask him. Okay. I think I read that in the Queen Central or something. That really surprises me. A business like a business of that size that doesn't have internet access that that kind of surprises me. That's like having a smoking section in an elevator. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so. We, we, <laughs> With that, any other public comments? I will open up the floor. We have Tim and we have Sandra. Hi, Tim. Glad you found Welcome. us. Commission members, Stephanie. No comments for me. It was it was great to uh, listen in. Thank you for allowing me. Thank you. I have no questions. Tim, if you were going to say something, I see you're you're, uh, you're muted right now. Okay, well, get on muted. Oh, we hear you, Ted. No. Can you hear? Oh, no, you're not now. You're good now. <laughs> good, stop. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I just wanted to report we're uh, in the final stages of our uh, comprehensive uh, plan update. And things are going very well. And we're having the planning board meeting the last Wednesday of this month. Where we're actually holding a public hearing before that. Uh, Matt and Elaine have been helping us out considerably, getting everything together. So we hope to have everything wrapped up by the end of the year. That's about it. That's great to hear, Tim. <clears throat> Just one quick note, uh, uh, maybe Ange can help me out in this, in regards to um, a little bit on this 480A. Uh, Osceola's town budget, uh, I think uh, if they do, they keep the budget exactly the same total as last year, um, you'll have to, what, would, what was it, Ange, uh, five point some percent increase, um, you're not changing anything. Yeah, uh, according to Fran Yarden at our CTHC meeting, if they keep a completely flat budget, the taxes for the other people are going to go up at least 5.6%, I think he said. Um, they haven't finalized their budget for this year yet, obviously. So um, I, I'm sure they're going to try and mitigate that as best they could. But I don't know how much you can mitigate a budget that's as slim as Osceola's already is. Right, exactly. Hmm. Anybody else?
Katie, did you turn the cameras off? I did not, but yours is off. I don't know why. I'm asking you to start yeah. your video. You must have to hit the button, Jan. I did. It's like a placebo. I've hit it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. I didn't. I didn't use my control for that. Oh, there, there you are. You're back. You see now. He's back. <laughs> Which is interesting. I'm back, but I can't see none of you now. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom's telling you to finish the meeting before it totally <laughs> falls apart. <laughs> I just wanted to say to our guests Hello. that guests are always welcome. We're always glad to have people tune in. And don't forget the Black River yep. um, thing that the commission is doing yep. online. That's pretty neat too. The, the Constable Chronicles are great and so so is the Black River thing. Wonderful, thank you. Yep. Anything else? Any comments, questions, queries, anything? No. No. Well, with that. <laughs> oh, no. I think I, we just lost Jan completely. Yeah, no picture, no Let's voice. adjourn quick. <laughs> I, I make a motion, we adjourn. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay. Jan, can you hear that? They just moved to adjourn. He's Got coming it. back. Thank you. <laughs> all in favor. All right. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all in December. See you next time. Okay. See you, gentlemen. Be safe. Take care. Take care.